Hello YouTube, I fix it all here, Team I fix it all. Um, someone asked about a uh, rapid test. I have a part one on this, a uh, single part. It uh, detects moisture in the ground. Um, we were having trouble with our raised garden beds last year, our first year at doing them because I was over watering and I didn't understand why things were getting yellow. So, um, the way I've got these done, they retain a lot of water. They have a lot of water reserve to get us through a dry spell. But the person had asked me a couple of questions like, it would be nice to do a comparison with the moisture in the yard compared to this. Well, let's do the yard first. First step is turn it on. Actually, I'm gonna clean the tip off. That was another question. How do you clean the tip off? They give you a scotch bright. I think it's like a, I don't know what grit it is, but it's a really uh, medium grit. I don't like the idea of using a scotch bright on the, the probe there, because I know this kind of technology, it's really sensitive. So I'm sitting on zero right now. Let's put it in the ground and see what we come up with. Uh, another part to this, let me turn it off for a minute. Um, when you buy these brand new, hi Elvis, um, if you depend on grabbing this to pull it out of the hard ground, you're probably going to pull this away from your metallic rod. So try to figure out a way to where you can, if you're going into ground that you know that's hard, try to, it's fine to push in with this, but when you lift out, make sure to grab a hold of the metal rod. If you don't grab a hold of the metal rod, you're going to separate this from this. And there's real fine conductors, probably 30 gauge or smaller, soldered to the electronics up here that do the LCD display, um, human interface uh, interpretation of what the moisture numerical value is. All right, we're on zero. And I'll try to find a better part here. Let me set you down for a minute. Nope, I can do this just fine. So I'm that deep in the ground, and it's telling me. And what you want to do is do the. Give it like three or four seconds to stabilize. The instructions tell you to do that. So it's telling me my yard is at 7.5. We did have some rain yesterday, 7.3. Okay. Now I'm going to clean it off. I'm wipe it off. Clean it good. Let's see what my bay number one, stall number one is at. Dooby dooby dooby. Six point six. That's pretty weird. The yard's wetter, but there's a lot of clay in the yard. Clean it off right there on my leg. Go down to another bay where my beets are popping. Let's see what we got here in the beets. Oh, you gotta turn it on and shove it in there. About 7.6 ish it's a lot of moisture for a garden and uh, a lot of plants that won't that don't tolerate high amounts of moisture uh, believe it or not tomatoes can be over moistured there's maters Getting a little yellow at the bottom. And uh, one of your sure indicators is your, if you got any kind of squash. Believe it or not, I don't know. But sheesh. Squash just 
it starts talking to you. Um, yellowing can be a sign of too dry or too moist. So you got to figure out which one it was or is. And that's what I was running into last year. Um, let's see what my uh, beet patch is up here. Turn it on. Shove it in. There's gravel there. I'll see what I can come up with. 8.3. I wonder what the moisture content is just under the mulch, like where the potatoes are. I wonder what the moisture content is. It's just not even going on the ground. Whoops, see what I mean? Something happened. It's a little plastique. I think I think I was supposed to JB weld this on by now. Hang tight. Yeah, that that came apart on me. Huh. Interesting. I didn't glue it yet. All right, let's see what the moisture content is just in the mulch. Five point six. That's surprising. It's always damp in the mulch. I didn't even never. I've never checked this before. There we go. There we go. <coughs> I wasn't going deep enough. Because there's hay at the very bottom of this. So it's trying to settle in. Right around 9-ish. A little bit above 9. 9.5. Uh, let's see what's going on up here. I'm going to go at an angle a little bit from my... Uh, Where it gets a lot of sunlight. Shove her in there. Oops, dang it. And I never did know if you put it in the ground while it's off whether it'll work or not. I've always, the instructions said to turn it on and then it'll zero out. So let's see what we got here. We're significantly uphill. I'm at an angle too, because 8.6, 8.5. So, there's the difference between the yard. Maybe I'll do a part three on it like a droughty time, you know, because I know the yard's clay and that's not the raised beds. Um, it's just hard to put this thing in the ground when it's dry. All right, so there you go. And and the other part was, do I believe that the metal inside my raised beds is contributing toward a false reading? Well, if this is a 4 to 20 millivolt sensor, which is typical for a lot of your monitoring systems, 4 to 20 millivolt drop, interprets a um, uh, the electronics will give you a display based on if it's four millivolts which is 0 0.004 volts um, the voltage apparently I would think that the this is probably the hot side and this is the negative side because there's a definite insulator value right there so if you're putting a voltage through and then the voltage is jumping through the earth to seek ground, the burden on the battery pack can be determined by a voltage drop, which gives you the millivolt reading. So I wonder if I'll get two different readings. 
near metal and away from metal. It's not. It's hard to test that though, guy. Whoever you are, I got. I forgot your name. Because the moisture level content. I'll just go for it. Let me just put this thing in the ground at about the same depth. Let's read way back here. Okay. Let's call that 7.3. Okay. Now, I see what you're saying now, because... If you have a metallic object interrupting, it's not like it's a radio frequency though. I, would, I wouldn't expect this to be a radio frequency going through, jumping from here to here. I wouldn't expect it to be radio frequency. Although I've got a way to, uh, I think I might have a way to test that with my uh, signal generator. All right, so that was 7.3. Let's put it right over here. And... Meow. 7.1. I'm going to say the answer to that is no. It's not like it was a... A bad question or a, a trivial question. I get what you're doing. Um, you must have some smarts about yourself for asking such a question. Because when I saw it, it raised my eyebrows. Because I got to thinking, hmm, interesting. So, there you go. Rapid test, moisture detector, moisture meter. Uh, what does it do in real water? I don't see anything in the instructions that tell me I'm not allowed to do this. So let's see what it does in water. <laughs> Is there moisture? <laughs> and by golly, there is. Well, um, you know, honestly, it's made to get wet. 9.9 .9. so really what it's trying to tell us is stop because 9.9 .9 is like biblical that's muddy but there's a benefit to getting it wet i can always wipe it off my your your jeans will be whoever that lady was asking about the cloth or that she didn't get a cloth in her pack the the cleaner cloth it's just a real gentle scotch bright just use something else just, i wouldn't recommend using that scotch bright because these probes are pretty sensitive and what i mean by what i'm saying on the voltage drop is that important or not let me see if i can read this camera up. yeah let's see so they turn that off Pop this off. Come on, fingernails. So there's three batteries in there. And what is the voltage? I think they're three volt. They should say right on them. Made in Chinesium, mercury free. Okay, so I should know this, but I don't. Okay, so I'm not making assumptions, but I'm. Hmm, I just made an assumption. Um, whatever those batteries add up to be, they could be in series or parallel, but the voltage is traveling. I wonder if I can take this apart and show you the problem. There we go. Hang tight, people. So, let me get you set up there. I 
see two conductors. One of them looks silvery, like it's just a braided shield, and the other one's green. Yeah, so I'd expect that bare braided one. If I were to just reverse engineer this whole thing. Put that back up in there and see if it keyways any way at all. Nope. This is the only thing I don't like about this. It's... Um, I would expect the battery voltage to be traveling through that end right there. And then traveling through the dirt and then touching this right here, which is the ground. And I might be backwards, but I would expect the smaller chunk of metal to be the hot. And then this would be your ground or the negative side. And whatever that difference of, you know, the battery has it collectively. Let's just say all the batteries are th uh, three volt. And they're in series, so you're injecting nine volts at the end. And it's, uh, mm, not enough hands. Let's just say there's nine volts appearing there. That's a plastic, or an insulator, about an insulator right there. Nine volts traveling through the dirt, getting the ground that way. And the, uh, the, 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 the equipment knows what the outgoing voltage should be. <coughs> Excuse me. And if it comes back at a certain value, then there's calibration. There's a calibration circuit in here that interprets a digital display that gives you a value. Um, and it's probably a four. That probe right there is probably a four to 20 millivolt. Um moisture detection device of some sorts so anyway that's uh round two of the rapid test shouldn't have done a 17 minute video on it but it got interesting all right guys see you later bye